Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as the Republic of Texas. In which right now, as you can see, the Americans are going to have a little bit of a good time. Um, but we're going to hang out real quick and at the time of this recording, it's July the 4th. So I figured, you know what, what's a better way to celebrate American independence by having a four way civil war so uh but we're texas right now and i'll be honest at the time of this recording i don't know which way we're gonna go uh we're gonna need the national guard just because we, we literally have no divisions but how about everything's bigger in texas because we have two national spirits right now and uh they're not very good for us so we can do that stuff or we can go to the second republic america has fallen apart and from the ashes of a fallen nation rises a new republic of texas america had failed they failed to protect us they failed to listen to the demands of the people we suffered under the U.S. before their untimely demise. But Texas is free once more. We will not make the same mistakes as in 1848. Now, uh, apparently we can restore the borders of 1848, which looks really cool. We can form the United States of Western America, which also sounds very, very cool. And then there is the Confederate States, which sounds very, very cool. So, um, I, I don't know how this is going to go. I'll be honest, Texas is going to be... Hello. Okay, Mexico just took Transpecos. The Second Republic. Texas regaining independence after almost 100 years of sticking with the U.S. was not something expected, however. If history has taught us one thing, it is to expect the unexpected. The collapse of the U.S., the fall from grace of the federal government in Texas, the bleeding Texas crisis that the government left unaddressed, all added fuel to the fire of Texan secessionism. The loyalty of Texas is not to Washington, but to Chicago, New Orleans, or New Orleans, or Nolens, but the people of Texas, which will always be put first. We are the Lone Star State, alone by ourselves while America burns around us. We made the grave mistake of joining the Union in 1848, but we will not make that mistake for again. As the world falls apart around us, our nation chants Texas forever, and there's a yellow rose in Texas. Yeah, what the heck? As soon as we start, Mexico just attacks us here? That's not cool. Now, ooh, the clan attacks. The Triple K has been a thorn in the side of all good-hearted Texans, but with the eruption of the American Civil War, second one, the official backing of the National Demo Democratic White League, the Triple K has been emboldened with a new sense of pride. They have embarked on a series of destructive terrorist attacks targeting the sitting Texan government. President Allred has long been a hard opponent of the KKK, having a reputation as being firm on them during his tenure as a judge. All major political factions in Texas agreed that the KKK must be is one of the main problems facing the Texan nation, and a problem that must be addressed soon. Oh dear. <clears throat> so let's not click on, that, um, or click on that one yet, but we have James Allred, and like I said, we have two national spirits. Bleeding Texas, which really sucks, and then Dust Bowl, which is pretty bad too. <clears throat> Excuse me, pretty bad, but uh, Allred splits, splits from the Democrats. After a long series of splits with the Democratic establishment over issues such as Texan independence, current President James Burr the V. Allred has officially left the Democratic Party and joined the ever-growing Texas Independence Party, which has decided to unilaterally elect Allred as its new leader. Along with Allred, a large chunk of Allred and the Democrat support base is left with him, cementing the position of the Texas Independence Party as a legitimate force in Texan politics. He's made his choice. And skirmishes with the AFP. Huey Long has never officially recognized Texas as a separate entity and has aided Unionist militias in Texas against sitting President Alred, hoping to bring about the annexation of the Second Republic of Texas into the American Union state. This has resulted in the AFP aligned militias committing acts of terror in the name of the American Union state, with the KKK and other factions engaging in political violence. This has done little but add fuel to the fire. Texas' uh, fragile political scene is pushed further towards its breaking point, and many worry that Texas will not be spared from the violence engulfing America. Warren Long, well, I'm not touching that either. No, thank you. And what's this? The public elections? Oh, I don't know which way we want to go, man. I'll be honest. Um, do, do, do they help us get rid of Bleeding Texas? Because I want to get rid of Bleeding Texas as fast as possible. Doesn't seem like like this guy would, so... I assume the other guys will not either, so... Uh, any other far left? A oh, strong hand. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Oh, border crisis. We will avoid war with Mexico. Bow to Mexico. No way. No way, no. Reopen the border. An agreement with Texas. Versus Revenge for the Alamo. Remember the Alamo, remember the Alamo. We gotta do that one. I don't know if we can actually do that yet, but... We only have a total population just under 6 million, so... LBJ splits from the Democrats, adding fuel to the political fires. Freshman representative and progressive rabble rouser Lyndon Baines Johnson has formally left the Democratic Party to form his own party, which is officially named the Broad Progressive Movement, or the Broad Progressive Front. This has further split the Democratic Party along its partisan lines and diminished their once strong hold over Texan politics. While at the moment Johnson's limited amounts of support compared to much stronger Texan Independence Party and Democratic remnants, Johnson succeeded in swaying Allred's more progressive base as well as the remaining Republican voters in Texas to his side. He has no shot. Everything's bigger in Texas too? Black gold. I like that black gold. Expand colleges though. Ooh. 
Uh, National Guard. Remember the... Oh, another research slot. And remember the Alamo. That'd be pretty good to do. How do we get rid of Bleeding Texas? Is that is that supposed to happen? Are we still supposed to be bleeding? Hold on. Ah, uh, just get rid of these. Ah, uh, Looming Crisis. Okay, so we, there, there's that one. So we'll do the National Guard next. The National Guard is now the only thing protecting Texas from chaos. The other factions are preparing to fight. And if we have ever shot at staying independent, we need the National Guard. Uh, collect the Western Swords of Robert E. Howard. Oh, look at that. I was kind of quite, I haven't read that one before. The current revival of American culture has been followed by the renaissance of Westerns as a genre of literature. One interesting case of this is a collection of short stories by Texas writer R.E. Howard, which has just been released. These stories, like The Pride of Bear Creek or Pistol Politics, focuses on describing adventurous life in the American frontier. Stories about gunslingers such as the Sonora Kid are especially popular in this genre, appealing to a wide swath of readers. This does not mean, however, that the author wrote Western stories only in this narrowly understood subgenre. Literary works such as The Adventures of the Texan Traveler Francis Xavier Gordon and The Coming of El Borak. Hawk of the Hills, a country of the knife, or even horror stories such as Black Canaan or Pigeons from Heck are all part of the Western genre, even if they're less traditional. Meanwhile, the popularity of Howard's Westerns is now so great that no one remembers the rest of the literary attempts to create other pulp heroes, such as a boring Conan the Barbarian or Na Naive Puritan Solomon Cain. Robert E. Howard remembers one of the fathers of Westerns. Nice. Texaco caught bribing politicians. The Texas Oil Company, better known as Texaco, has had a long stake in the lucrative Texan oil industry, but has now extended the control out from, from the oil industry and into the political game. Since the bleeding Texan crisis, Texaco has gained an almost complete monopoly in oil in Texas and has used its influence to bully local politicians that are doing their bidding, succeeding in awarding contracts to Texaco and re-regulating re the industry. While most would assume that this is motivated by profits, Texaco CEO Tor Lid Reiber, who has long harbored a hatred for cynicalism and a strong ad admiration for authoritarian systems, has used Texaco's fortune and influence of politics of the nation towards a more corporate, corporocratic model. Oh dear. Oh wow, we lose a lot of political power. That sucks. But oh baby, we gotta support or get raise up that National Guard. Second Republic, thank goodness. There goes the last Republic. That really sucks. Mexico's gotta die. AFP gains traction in Texas. While Texas has defined its own path once more as an independent nation, as many feel still loyalty to America, wanting to either join the U.S. or demand or join the war as a partner of one of the factions. This Texas first part is demanding that Texas join with the American Union state to defend the rightful American government against cynicalists and ultra-nationalists. He will long as lent an air of support to the Texan firsters. While they hope to eventually return the favor to long in the American Union state, we must prepare. Oh, look at all that pee, pee Oh, and the war started. Well... I mean, I guess we can go to partial mobilization. Oh, it would be a text code right there. That's not bad. 30% refinery construction speed? Look at that. Eh, oh, my goodness. AFP agitation, clan agitation, dust bowl stuff. Uh, Mobile oil? Esso? Lone Star Steel? Oh, that's not bad. That's actually really good. I'm going to go ahead and go to partial mobilization, maybe. Well, still can't build anything. The Second American Civil War begins. Uh, happy Independence Day. And if you're not watching this on July the 4th, well, I'm going to assume I'm going to treat it like July the 4th regardless. Uh, John Hans Gardner flees to Texas. John Nance Garner has fled from the bloodshed of the Second American Civil War and taken refuge in his home of Texas until the crisis blows over. While many on Texas soil support him as a political figure and even possible president, Garner appears to be done with politics and has elected to retire on his ranch for the time being Howard. The volatile Texan political scene could thrust Cactus Jack back in the spotlight of political office. Lives a quiet life? No, lives for another day. Hmm. Here's that one. As the Second American Civil War rages, we need a plan to contain violence, not just on the outside of a border, but inside our borders too. Chilean Argentinian War? Alright then. National plan. Um infantry equipment, upgrade our weaponry. Texan units in southern Texas, nice. Land doctrine. Get a lot more stuff. Remove looming crisis. Wait, looming crisis. Traditional warfare. Remember the album would be really nice to do. Oh, the broad progressive gains traction. LBJ surge in popularity has come back as a shock nearly the entire nation. The Democratic establishment and the Independence Party have been established as the two main forces in Texan politics, but the broad progressive bloc has solidified its position in the third place, potentially making a kingmaker in Texan politics. While Johnson has his eyes on the presidency, there's little doubt that the young progressive movement has little shot at gaining enough to win the nation's highest office. Out of character for a Texan. And these guys are, well, they got nice guns. And some arty, which is nice too. Oh, oh my goodness. Deal with America firsters. Okay. Okay, that's kind of cool. We can do both. That's probably going to do. 
Texan, Texaco influences love. The Texaco oil company has a large amount of influence in both the Texan oil industry and the Texan economy. If not properly dealt with, the Texaco could potentially be given a stranglehold on the Texan economy and potentially the Texan government. Crackdown on corruption. Move against the government. This can allow Texaco to overthrow the government. Oh boy. Um, well, we're just kind of hanging out for now. So, national plan. Simpson plan. Traditional warfare. Walker plan. Oh. Influ introduce tanks. Two tank divisions. That's not bad. I mean, yep. To really compete against these other guys, you probably really do need that. Um, where is that really the only one for bleeding Texas? Oh, so that's, it becomes Looming Crisis. Okay, that's not too bad. And the Crisis we're good to get rid of, too. Um, taking down the Dallas Clan. Long has the Dallas Clan terrorized the people of Texas. Well, these white hooded cretins have contributed to the nation to this nation nothing and must be dealt with swiftly. Surprisingly, despite their friendly relationship with the Constitutional American Republic, the Texaco oil companies helped with taking down the clam, arguing that their terrorism is bad for business. Back to where you belong. Everything's bigger in Texas. I would love to... Oh, wow. Minus 20% consumer goods. That's pretty good. Not gonna lie. So, we'll get that Lumen Crisis done. Or get it, get to that. Uh, uh, everything's bigger in Texas. What we really get to do as well. I want to get down there fast. This stuff is okay. And I don't want to lose any more political power, but still... Uh, everything's bigger in Texas. Texas's industrial market can be matched by a few states. <clears throat> Just so, as with everything, as with hats, as with steaks, as with cattle, and with guns, everything's bigger in Texas. All right, so who do we have for general here? Uh, coal, huh? Sweden's doing the Reichs Pact. Um, Rudder Lucian Truscott. I think I'm about to choose him. Ah, yeah, Edwin Walker. Iris C. Eaker. Alright, Spanish Civil War. Actually, we probably could help out there. All factions except Texan independence. War with the infight and the chaos surrounding the Second American Civil War. No faction wants to go through the pain of invading us. In a conference today, leaders from the combined syndicates, the Union State, the Constitutionalists, and the U.S. have, meet, or have met. And unilaterally accepted our independence. We're glad we've got this settled. Nice. Alright, who are we going to choose? Um, I mean, that's not bad. But... Leader experience gets... That's only minus 10%. But this guy's actually slightly better, probably. So, I'll choose you. Bruce. Hey, Bruce. How you doing? I don't know why I say it like that, but... <laughs> oh, you choose another one, yes. Oh, King of the Hill... King of the Hill premieres on the radio. A new radio show is taken in the nation of Buzz. King of the Hill tells the story of Hank Hill and his family and their struggles as a Texan family. He works for a propane company and often hosts neighborhood barbecues. While the relatively dry humor has turned off some, the ratings are favorable and the Texan public seems to enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Bobby. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's funny. Alright, national plan. Thank you very much. Everything's bigger in Texas. A 35 day focus. We're going to let the American factions kill each other off first. So after that one, we got to do farm relief. We, we've got to do it. Minus 20% consumer goods and more construction speed. Super important. The government so far has done little to stop the suffering in Texas as farmers. That ends now. The legislature has approved a vast series of legislation aimed at helping the nation's farmers. This legislation will hopefully help mitigate the effects of massive crop failures. Oh, wow, the Swiss Confederation joined them? We're literally losing political power every single day. That really sucks. Now let's grab some research speed. We only threw research slots, but... Um, I know the Western Command Center usually doesn't do that well, but holy crap. Oh, boy. Um, I, I, I don't know, like, I'll be honest. I mean, as you, could, as you guys can tell... <clears throat> let's see what the clan... America first or so. Um, you can tell which direction we're going to go by the end of this video, but for me, I have no idea. I kind of want to go completely independent, but that's going to be insanely difficult. Canada supports the federal government. Um, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Hmm. Um, I don't, I kind of want to help the Union State, because, I mean, there's, Texas is supposed to be part of the Union State normally, but... <sighs> hmm. Because I do want to go to the 1848 borders. If they can capitulate the Western Command Center, we can go to war with the American Union State. We can actually probably get this stuff done. Get the Oklahoma Panhandle, Carson, Rio Grande, Eastern New Mexico. The Western States of America. We can't do that one, though, because they took this. But the Farm Relief Act. Mozambique Bush War. All right. Bolster Texaco. It looks, looks pretty good. Aries Commission. Oh, man. Dust Bowl Recovery. Oh, that'd be actually pretty good. Ooh, it's another minus... Ooh, that's not bad. That's not bad, man. That's not bad. I do want to end the crisis, though. We could use that extra political power, though. Um, 
Ooh, land auction would be good to do, though. Mmm. Mmm. There's, there's so much stuff I want to do here, man. Power to the oil barons. And that's national populace or paternal autocrats. Power to the 1%. I don't know if I want to go down that way. Blur the lines. The second... Rep second oh, second republic of Texas. Slaves of the dollar. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to go down that way. I don't think I want to. A new Texas rise, which seems... For it would be interesting, because that's left Texas. Because you can get Woody Guth Guthrie. Guthrie? Guthrie? President LBJ, Alred, of course, Wilbert Lee O'Daniel, which I don't know who that is. Then you get Cactus Jack over there, which seems actually kind of cool. The TCSS. I kind of like that. And a strong hand. Oh, that was not too bad either. The Texas First Party. The Un-Texan Activities Committee. Public Safety Laws. Not bad. Secure Position. Red Scare. Loyal to None. Oh. Neutrality. Reclaim the Borders. I kind of like that. I kind of like that a lot. Texan Allies. Playing your cards? I kind of like that, too. Because, mm, ah, Jesus Christ, I, I'm so indecisive right now. But, that's what's going to go on, because we still got to fix ourselves up here. So, open the Fort Worth Military Academy. With the advent of modern weapons comes a need for modern tactics. We can't just ride <clears throat> over the deserts and mountains and hope for the best. We need to organize sustained strategies to support our army. And get some political power, my goodness. Ah, there goes the Western Command Center. We'll see how these guys do, because now it's a full-on civil war with everybody there. Don't mind Texas, we're just kind of hanging out for now. Don't mind us, we're just doing the best we can. Slightly more manpower, not bad. Come on, Texans, make more babies. Run it out, make babies. It's kind of nice not engaging in the Civil War yet. Are these guys, oh, are these guys not killing each other yet? Are you guys fighting um, the PSA? No, they're not. Oh, maybe they are. No. No, they're not. Hey, and that's actually good. That the PSA is actually going to war with America as well. Oh, hello. Oh, do we actually have planes? Oh, let's deploy some Texan planes. Nice. We're working some carrier fighters too, but I'm not sure if we're going to actually use carriers or not. We'll just see how far we can get, because with this, I mean, there's not a whole lot we can do. Bonus for land auction would be good. And we'll do loosening gun laws. Loosening gun laws will allow more Texans to carry arms. Then allow more Texans to potentially rise up and defend our nation. 10,000 things of rifles? Sounds great. Wow, the car is really pushing hard. They took Indianapolis. Um, PSA is looking pretty okay. Not too bad, not too bad. German Empire, the... Uh, well, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Protector of the Balkans, huh? The National Anthem. The official National Anthem of Texas is the patriotic song, Texas are Texas. But many in our nation would prefer to have the popular folk song, The Yellow Rose of Texas. Who we who should we listen to, and what shall we pick as the first national anthem? Texas or Texas? I don't know. The Yellow Rose of Texas seems kind of nice. I don't know Texas or Texas. I'm gonna go with the Yellow Rose. Let's go, let's go with Yellow Rose this time. Thirty-seven, not bad. Illyria is looking nice and thick. Wow, they it's a thick Illyria. Bulgaria, anything else? Oh, dispersed industry. Thank you very much. Um, mobile warfare might be the way to go. Because uh, mm. we do start thinking about land auction. I guess right now we just don't have the industry for anything here, really. Like, how many tanks are we making? Eight a year. <laughs> um, that's not very good. I'll be honest. That's not very good. So, I think... You know what? Let's do it. Let's go mobile warfare. We're going to go for, focus on tanks as best we can. Because getting armored armor on the field... Well, I think that's the only thing that could really give us an advantage. And we're all down here in Houston. Nice. Even though I, how strong is Mexico? Can I just beat the crap out of Mexico as Texas? I kind of doubt I can. But I'd love to be able to do that. Plutarco Calles. Yeah, they got way too many divisions for us to fight them. Um, we're making any divisions. We're trying to make two American Union State divisions. So, um, yeah. It is what it is. Texas National Guard. National Guard. Oh, yeah. So, do that once. There you go. There you go. Cool, just in case. Oh, we have a dockyard now? All right, then. There you go. And then we're going to go ahead and do... Listen, gun laws. Because we need more guns. Yeah, we're at minus 2,900. Three, basically minus 1,000 and end the crisis. The military has successfully deployed, and Texas is now safe from looters and criminals. People of Texas can eat us easy, knowing that they're now safe in their own homes again. Nice. Dust Bowl. That's a lot better than it was earlier. And I was thinking produce anything. God dang it. And we don't have that many cities. How many cities we got? We got six. 
We have a lot of military factories, though. So, yeah, the car's definitely pushing for Chicago. They're really pushing for Chicago. <clears throat> now, if I don't know if Canada's going to intervene. It's kind of cool if they did, though, but we're making no political power. Um, Brad politicians. Uh, nothing here, nothing here. Rally public support. I really want to restore them borders, man. I want to wait till the American Union State goes to war with the PSA, though. Really got to wait. Nepal, Dominion. I just... If we send guys, we're going to lose manpower. I don't really want to lose manpower. <clears throat> oh, the fourth Balkan War. Very good. The final nail is being nailed. Now look at that. It's kind of messy. It's kind of disgusting. Down Kaban Union. Which way is Russia going right now? The Far Eastern Republic, huh? Dmitry Romanov. Alexander Kerensky. And there goes Honduras. Oh, poor Bulgaria. Wait until the Romanians show up. Tip has only got 10%. That, that really kind of sucks. Hmm. <laughs> there goes Ireland. Alright, my friends. And the crisis. And, whoa. Well, that sucks for those guys. Hey, big red one. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. Anything else here? Uh, scavenger. Oh, you gotta go scavenge for that guy. Anything else for Bruce? Not really. Go on train if you need to. American Union say seems to be doing pretty darn well right now. Oh, whoa. Okay, that's weird. Why is the car so strong right now, though? Usually, I think the car usually does pretty well, at least my campaigns, early on, and they just start, they just lose too many guys, so. After the crisis, I think it's time to expand the irrigation systems. The Dust Bowl came about due to massive crop failures and drought, meaning that to help lessen the effects and prevent future crop failures, we must invest in irrigation systems. That's a lot of crops receive water, even the harshest of the climates. Get 10% more consumer goods, more factory construction speed. Get more factory output, which is super important too. But hey, look. Looking pretty good. Not too bad. We'll see. Man, the American Union State is very strong right now. Feds ain't doing too much. Um, oh, well, there goes MacArthur. He's gone. Charles Martin. Patriotic shorts. Oh, look. Disney, huh? No? No? Oh, they don't have that much manpower. Yeah, I mean, that's the feds. What do you expect, you know? That's alright, though. Alright, so after that, we'll do this one. And I'm not going to get rid of the Dust Bowl yet. Bolster Texaco seems... <sighs> Expanding mining facilities? That would be bad. Are we really... We're not really in a place to do any of this stuff. What is that? Secure the Monopoly. That's a lot more political power. Break Texaco. They will not like us, and they have some powerful allies. Encourage competition. One company. Oh... I, I think I want to break Texaco. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's just good to do. Bolster Texaco right now. Texaco's grip on oil and gas is ever growing. Thanks to Texaco's monumental influence, political influence, Texaco's managed to eat up several competing oil companies and be awarded several lucrative government contracts. Get more political power, which is nice. Get more research speed for synthetic resources and refinery construction speed plus 30%. Texaco will be available as a company, of course, but that's okay. Um, We already have a lot of fuel. We'll get 6.8 thousand every day so anybody want fuel uh we'll, we'll be okay you know selling stuff west virginia's almost gone wow jesus christ car what the heck is wrong with you keep smoking a fat one Murray. national jim crow <laughs> wow that's a lot of manpower of course they're not extensive but still stockpile i can't imagine they have a lot more, that much to stockpile but let's get point to political power every single day and eh, we have no ships yet which sucks but whatever are they... Did they push into Mississippi? Wow. What is wrong with the American Union State? What is Huey Long been eating? Oh, 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 the PSA, CSA is pushing back. CSA is, ain't taking crap for an answer. No, no, no. Our right, construction is very nice, very nice. It is very nice just watching them kill each other. Oh, it is 38. Where's your speed? And then Bolster Texaco is only a three week focus, which is pretty nice. And then Break Texaco. We got, I'm going to deal with this. Oh, that is so long. 133 days? Holy crap. Too long as the Texas oil company and the crop ban of cronies roam around Texas, thinking that they are above the law. It's time to break the Texaco monopoly and send their soulless executives to the only place they belong prison. And I know I apologize. I'm taking so long to figure out who we're going to be led by, but I, I, I don't want to you know, deal with them. The military's in charge. Oh, that shouldn't be bad. The Eisenhower Junta. The Nimitz Junta. Iker Junta. Oh. Dissolve the Senate. 
Three elections. Okay, so you can get cooed and go back this way. Houstonian idealism. That's not too bad. Autocracy without oppression. Freedom without democracy. The G-Men. Balance of powers. Free elections. Alright, my friends, and I'll see you in just a little bit. Alright, my friends, so we've broken Texaco, we've got a couple options, and I might have just had us join the Reichspact because we're going to need strong leaders, and the Entente favored the federal government, so... I'm not feeling too good about them, but should we join Middle Europa? Now that we've chosen to align with the German Empire, an opportunity has risen to join the economic pact, the Central European Economic Zone, shortened to Middle Europa. Though this pact is dominated by Germany and its interests enforces several obligations on its member states, it also provides several benefits. Easier trade with Germany and mutual defense in particular. Should we offer to join the Middle Europa sphere and accept these obligations? Why would we give up our sovereignty? That's part of the deal, I suppose. <clears throat> because at this point, well, the American, uh, nothing's really changed here. I mean, the car and the American state are doing pretty well against the CSA for the most part. There's, these guys still aren't fighting each other. And if we join Metal Europa, it doesn't mean we have to stay there. It doesn't mean we have to do too much. And also, here's a path guide, like, at the bottom here. We can get the Texan Kaiserreich if Germany falls. Germany will probably fall, but, you know, maybe we can do well with these guys. You know, it's part of the deal, I suppose. And we get some economic stuff here with them. Why would we give up our something? Now, that makes more sense for us, technically, but it doesn't mean we have to stay there forever, so... Part of the deal, I suppose. But I want to read a couple of the folks that are done off screen. So we did break up Texaco. Um, but I've also gone done the Walker plan. General Walton Walker has been listened to. His plan of motorizing Texas army, introducing tanks of 1L. We've introduced tanks. Several tanks have been purchased by a government from Germany and Russia. Now we're ready to test them out. And then improve military research institutes. We're not exactly well known for military innovation nowadays. By investing our war loot into a sustainable system of institutes, we'll be able to ensure that our forces are kept abreast of the latest developments in scientific research from across the globe. Other than that, not too much else except we've done Texan allies. The Texan nation has once again defined its place on the world stage, and thus must pick a side in the ever-shifting world of global geopolitics. Who will we side with? Embrace German ties. Germany and Texas have had ties going back centuries, so allying with the Kaiser is a logical conclusion. Texas and Germany will stand together against syndicalist hordes and loyal to none. Let's say that Texas should take a side in the Civil War. No, Texas must be strong, independent, and must not make the same mistake that we made in the 50s. We will rule all the factions. Texas will rule them all and follow it up with... Well, probably the little event chain that regarding our decision to go places, such as which ideology we will go. New companies will be available. I like that one a lot, but this stuff is all okay. Texan Air Corps, Texan Navy. Realistically, I think up next we've got to do public elections. The rapid collapse of order in the former U.S. of A. and the secession of Texas left Texan politics in a precarious spot. Our has abandoned the Democratic plan or party to take leadership of the fledgling Texas Independence Party, while Democrats are coup. And LBJ has formed his own front while Texas going the TFP medal. With extraordinary times upon Texans, former governor now President Alvarez made a call for public elections. The Democrat Party primary with elections for governor fast approaching, the Democratic Party has been left without a leader as governor. And sitting head of the party, James Alvarez split from the Democrats and joined with the ever-growing Texas Independence Party. The natural favorite for candidates will Wilbert Lee O'Daniel, a former flower. Salesman and radio star, however, many within the Democratic Party wish to throw the nomination of popular former presidential candidate John Nance Garner, was flooded to his home of Texas to escape the turmoil of the Second American Civil War. Democratic Party wins. I mean, I don't want to go with the, uh, that's actually not too bad. You get a lot of political power with this guy if you go with, uh, oh, actually becomes a third in Democrat. Oh, we got to go with the, uh, this guy. I mean, if he's, if he's showing with you with a revolver, you kind of go, got to go down that way, right? No, oh, that seems kind of nice. Of course, the uh, Wilbert Lee Daniel route as a moderate wing in the Democratic Party. Old age pensions, hunt waste, deal with syndicalism, on the radio, beautiful Texas. Well, we're kind of going this way already. And I do kind of want to go down with uh, the Texas first party. And this seems kind of like craziness over here. And I've already gotten a limited conscription, so the next one will go up to extensive. Um, Red Scare, authoritarian democracy. Strong hand sounds like fun. Support Huey Long. Secure position. Um, a referendum on Texan statehood. Well, oh, Jan Ons Gardner. I guess it's time for Gardner. He conservative leaders for social conservatives. Political power. Interesting, interesting. And if that's the case, we'll probably go ahead and do this one. When America collapsed, Gardner's political career seemed to come to an end. As America fell into the flames, Gardner fell back to his home state of Texas. Yet fate was not done with him. After success of securing the Democratic nomination, Garner was elected president of the Second Republic of Texas and will shape the future of the reborn republic in his image. 
Elections of 1939, there's much way to dance around. The first elections in almost 100 years where Texas is its own fully sovereign republic and not state. While it follows the standard procedure of government, governor's election, the election is officially for the president of the second republic of Texas. The main competition is sitting between President James V. Allred and the Democratic nominee John Ann's Gardner, better known as Cactus Jack. Lyndon Baines Johnson is of the broad progressive friends also received a large outpour of support from Texans, however, his chances of actually winning appear to be slim, as part of the votes as the votes are fi being finished ca uh, counted, who's actually won. Allred holds on to power. Garner's Democrats, LVJ's progressives, we gotta go with Democrats for now. And look at that hat. Laps so good. And right now, go on and go ahead and reclaim the borders of 1848. Too long have we lay dormant, we will take the legacy we deserve. We shall thrust a knife into the backs of the Americans they, while they are too busy fighting one another. Not long, not Haywood, not MacArthur will stop us. Texas will be independent forever. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. And obsession with national security, which seems like it's going to go ahead and just uh, complete, though. Syndicalists threaten Texas, and some politicians are doing nothing to stop them. Garner's different, and he will not stand for that. The Dallas Plaza bombing. President Garner, ever hated by the Reds for his outspoken opposition to socialist radicals, was almost killed today when anarchist terrorists attempted to bomb his rally. A makeshift bomb was planted underneath the podium where Garner was set to speak. However, the bomb exploded before Garner could even arrive to his rally. However, the bomb so exploded, killing many others in attendance. With this, while this action just one of many committed by socialist terrorists, President Garner could use this as an excuse to, for a harsh crackdown on socialism in Texas. Arrest the plotters. Arrest all socialists and declare martial law. Absolutely. Obsession with national security, and look at that. Oh, he's, I love that top hat, man. It's so good. And like I said, um, this is just going to autocomplete. Anyway, so we got this one done. And I, I'm trying to go to war. I know the second Valkyrie will spawn within the next few months, but like I still want to go to war and take all the rights to pack soldiers and just try to win the war as fast as we can. But we'll see what happens against the American Union State. Restrict the press. Some of the papers have been putting out negative stories about our government. And this has obviously been a plot by the syndicalists to undermine us. So to keep us safe from the Reds, we'll have to restrict the press. Oh, boy. Nothing like restricting the press. We're going to go immediately as fast as we can. We Actually, those two tank divisions I said earlier, they're actually heavy tanks for some reason. So, there's some thick boys. There's some real thick boys. And we still have no consumer goods, which I didn't realize that we would never have consumer goods. But whatever. And we'll go straight to not do that one because that's going to cost political. But we might go to extensive conscription immediately. So, the next level for this one will push us over to um, even higher. Where was it? Is it over here? Uh... Over here. Conscription. This is good. Type in conscription. Conscript. There you go. Public safety laws. It goes partial mobilization, war economy, limited conscription with extensive conscription. So it just gives you the next higher level. So that's okay with us. Strong hand. Restrict the press. All right, my friends. Is it just against the United States of America? Well, are they in any faction? No, they're not. And we're going to call in our allies. Let's see what happens. That's probably a really bad idea. We're joining the fray. <laughs> the Reichs Pact has intervened and they got rid of the soldiers, volunteers here. Not bad. West Command Center, Deutsch Ostasian. War propaganda. I don't know if it's going to really do anything for us, but you know, whatever. Um, Wide Ruthenia as well. Hopefully they take out these guys too, but you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Can we actually go to war with these guys? I don't know why we go to war with these guys. Like, can we not go to war with the American Union States? No, we can't. Okay. Alright then. I was hoping that by doing that, we could go to war with the American Union States as well. So... But I guess not. Or, or, we also go to war with Mexico. They're not any faction. That's not a bad idea. Maybe try to fight Mexico first with the help of the Reichs Pact. So we can take El Paso back. That's not a bad idea, actually. Um, I'm going to leave you here in Houston. I'm going to leave you here down here as well, just because supplies will be real bad. American Union State, nope. Because I do want to restore the borders of 1848. That's why I did all this stuff, so. Chicago's gone. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Restrict the press eventually, but I think up next, we're going to go ahead and do Revenge for the Alamo. 35 day focus, I still have found with us. The Alamo was a brutal slaughter. Mexico is still yet to be punished. Today, well, now it's the time. Mexico's pushed us too far, and today will be the day we execute revenge. Remember the Alamo? Remember the Alamo. That would be good. Defend democracy at all costs, which would be good. And rewrite the Constitution. The Democratic Party will become the ruling party. Public elections will not be held, which is kind of cool, actually. we got two weeks left, and there's not really much we can do here. Let's get some uh, war support if we can, just because 56% isn't very good. Uh, we'll do that for now. That really sucks if we can't do anything here, though. Oh, look at that. Sweden's trying to do stuff over here. They can't really do too much since we're not really allied over there. Even though Haiti did join. Um, with that... Okay. Yeah, M3 Fremonts. Yeah, we definitely need more light tanks, but yeah. 
Why not? Why not? Oh man, that's actually... Ooh, let's get this, this as fast as we possibly can first. I'm not sure this is going to do anything for us. Anatolian Kurdistan. The Ottoman Counter-Revolution. Alright. Alright. Cool. And I guess... Oh, oh. Well, and I do want to show you what Europe looks like. They're still fighting the Italians. Holy crap. And the Dutch, I think, have gone syndicalist or totalist or... Arnold Meyer, huh? They went totalist. Uh, Civil Wars over there are doing that. Who are... I've never seen the Anatolian Kur Kurds. Do you even need focus tree? Oh, you don't. Oh, that's it's, it's really weird to see. A nation in Kaiser Redux or Kaiser Reich not having a unique focus tree at this point. But after this, Revenge for the Alamo, we're going to go straight for... Defend democracy at all costs. Syndicalism threatens Texas as its very core and is a threat to the democratic system we know and love. We can now work with these beasts that want to see our nation burn and see the menace of Chicago dance on our graves. Well, it's about August 5th, 1939, and, uh, well, we've invaded Mexico, as you can see. And we're doing okay, and they're beating us up in a few areas, and I guess Norway and the Common France trying to go to war with Germany, but hey, it is what it is. Um, but look out some more focus to do. Rewrite the Constitution. The current Texan Constitution gives too much leeway for the syndicalists and people that want to do Texas harm. We cannot allow us to be governed by laws that let people want that want to destroy Texas have the same voice as people who want to see our nation succeed. And I forgot, uh, or didn't realize that, you gotta be a subject of the American Union State without John Nance Garner here, so we can't do this side or secure a position, but it is what it is, so... We have a strong hand. Texas has far too long been under weak leadership. A strong hand is needed for all Texans, and one that will keep them safe in the paper chain. We'll have illuminate the presence of opposition figures without our nation struggling. But the answer to our problems is not only to simply overthrow them or throw them in jail. Instead of looking like despots imprisoning our opponents, we will simply make their lives a living heck. We will make it do that effectively oppose us. They will need to be drowning in paperwork and then uh, extend Ghana's power. John has Ghana seized power not to control a state like some petty despot, but to protect Texas from despots. People who hate Texas and hate everything your nation stands for, Ghana will keep Texas safe and from these people, he will protect Texans from themselves. And whenever Texas is threatened, whenever our enemies are opposed to strike, Ghana will always defend Texas. Followed up with... Ooh, investigate opponents. I like that. Anyone who dares oppose Cactus Jack must have something to hide. We must find out every action they have buried, every crime they try to cover up. All will be revealed in due time. And use... Uh, dies. Let's do Ghana's pledge first. Goes to get more uh, popular with authoritarian democracy. Texas is surrounded by Reds. And by local despots that would rather sell their own soul to stay in power. That's why a strong emphasis must be placed on protecting democracy with an emphasis on protecting the things that Texas stands for. Texas must always be democratic, but always strong and free. Weather the harshest storm, which looks pretty good for recovery rate, organization, and factory output. As the storm rages, Texas steadfastly stands. Despite the war, despite the chaos, President Garner's instilled a fighting spirit in us. A spirit that makes all Texans know in their hearts that we can weather anything that the world throws at us and use dies. Martin Dyes Jr. may not be fully supportive of President Garner, but that does not mean he's useless. He is a powerful person with powerful tools at his disposal. With his help, traitors will be rooted from Texas once for all and defender of Texas. John S. Garner successfully defended Texas from its ills. He has stopped our nation from rotting from within, all thanks to the president or president. John Nance Cactus Jack Gone has saved Texas from chaos, war, and tyranny. This is the defender of Texas, and the man that Texans can always count on to defend their interests. Long live Cactus Jack, long live Texas, and I'll see you very soon. The Texas Command and Security Service. Texas has had a problem with insurgents and people who want to do harm. Texas is lacking a centralized security force, and the establishment of one will greatly help. The Texas Command and Security Service has been established to help alleviate these problems. This will help keep Texas safe with more daily political power, less uh, foreign subversive activities efficiency, more stability, quite a bit more, and a lot more defensive core territory in the cult of Cactus Jack. John Nance Garner, long reveled as a savior of Texas, has now reached a status as cult-like figure than Texan life. His larger-than-life personality, combined with his political prowess in Texas, have put him into the hearts and minds of every Texan, with songs, posters, and other tributes to the heroic savior of Texas being commonplace. Hey, put up Merrill's of Garner, wearing this iconic cowboy hat and smoking a ciggy, or cigar. They sing songs about how he's a defender of Texas, how they almost worship him, and see him as some sort of destined savior of Texas. With Cactus Jack's cult personality rapidly growing, the question of what remains was whether Garner should officially endorse us, or endorse this, or take no action on the matter. Cactus Jack will save Texas? Look at that cigar. Puff, puff. The House of Un-American Activities Committee. Chairman Dees today announced a special committee to investigate activities they labeled un-Texan. Hearings began as swiftly as anyone with even the slight socialist leanings were added to the growing lists. Throughout the week, the list grew larger and these grew more suspicious. He even accused God in his own cabinet of having syndicalist sympathies. He also accused one of his secretaries of being a nudist. Her relevance to national security was not explained, but uh, traitors beware. Oh, look at that. A lot more political power gets more war support and deal with third democracy. And you might be wondering... Why do you own Washington, D.C.? Well, that's because I called in some Fed boys. And Fed boys? No, not Fed boys. Uh, actually, we're doing really well against Mexico. Um, but, like, before, like, the, the Germans... <coughs> excuse me. Um, 
uh, before the actually the French went to war with the Germans, actually after they went to war with them, they actually successfully naval invaded first Elizabeth City, and then they actually successfully invaded Washington D.C. Um, I, I don't really care about D.C. I, mean, I wasn't really paying attention, but I figured you know what. Let's not give American land to Germany, so... And also, I'm totally winning in Mexico here, totally because of ourselves. Totally not because of the Argentinian national state. We're still doing pretty darn well. We're doing okay. And they're, like you saw, they're really close to capitulation. We're almost there. Almost, almost there. More got to do Defender of Texas once again, and thank you very much. I'll be honest, like, what's more patriotic than, as an American or Texan? Taking out Mexico. I don't know what it is, but uh, we've already gone and got some Lone Star Steel, which sounds awesome. Let's grab some weapon manufacturer, soft attack and defense, soft attack breakthrough. Breakthrough is going to be really important so we don't lose that much manpower because it's pretty difficult to get more manpower. But, ah, uh, Smith and Weston. And let's see if we can actually take some of these guys out because look at those trucks. They ain't looking good. Hopefully, the Argent hello, Argentinians are going to continue doing what they're doing. Um, I think, hold on, guys. Just please. Please, hold your butts. S sir, sir? Sir? Hold, hold. Hold. I don't know why you want to go through there so badly. But uh, I have the German still wants to go into war. I'm like, I don't know about that, son. I don't know. But what we can do is go here, probably, actually. Let's do that, because we're going to use our heavy tanks here, too. Because why not? Uh, is this a... Oh, it is a mountain tower. That is not idea. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Um, and they're still attacking us, which is fine with me. But you know what? If they want to attack, attack, attack... We could probably do the same thing down here too. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, that works out with us. Now we got to get to Durango, but it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, and supply-wise, we're not doing great. We're we're good on guns. We're still good on artillery. We got a good amount of anti-air. We just need more support equipment and tanks, light tanks, to be specific. Oh, there's only two divisions here. You might be able to do pretty darn bueno. Let's see. Let's take a look, shall we? We shall. Um, hopefully we can get these guys done. Do we have air superiority? I think we do, right? Yeah, we do. These guys on here don't. But up here, I mean, we still got good planes. Oh, and you know what? What's good about being at war? People give us all sorts of supplies all the time. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. And actually, you've got a good amount of manpower for now. Let's get a little bit more. I know I should be treating with these guys, but that's okay. That's what should make more millies, so it is what it is. Come on, Mexico, give it up, give it up, give it up. Every tile we take, we get slightly closer, 91% of the way there. Not bad. They're attacking us a little bit like crazy over here. I do want to maybe. Okay. We're slowly taking more land. Come on, Argentina, keep going. You've done a great job so far. Mass motorization will help us out greatly and grab some mechanized offensives. I know we're not using that many tanks here, but using tanks in mountain regions is just not a very smart idea, so. And anytime they have a hole, we enter it. Cool. You guys should be able to do okay there. Trust got Lucian Trust got's level five. And doing all this stuff will help us out with uh the American Civil War when we get to it for realsies. And uh yeah, the uh, CSA's got Chicago back, so. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, man, they really try to make a beeline for Atlanta, but they're getting stopped. Oh, man, that kind of sucks for you guys, but oh, well. Um, since Argentina is really helping us out, I'm not too worried about actually moving our divisions over there. We should be able to take the rest of this territory here. And by the end of this war, we're going to keep Transpecos and make Tex Texas, make Me Me Mexico a puppet of us. So that is the uh, big old idea. I kind of doubt we'll, we would be able to win here, but this would definitely help us out if we could. Oh, yeah, that's going to be kind of costly, but that's okay. That's okay. You're doing well over here, perhaps? Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Argentina, please do something. Please help us out. And we went over there. Very, very nice. I got four divisions. Man, Mexico. Fighting Mexico with their mountains. Really is big sucko. Really not bueno. All we need to take is Durango. That's all we need to get here. Maybe move over here or here. And push to Durango. And they should capitulate. They should capitulate. Oh. Um, okay. Well, there goes those guys. Fanner, Texas. Absolutely. My goodness. Are they doing, like, force defense or something? Uh, they're on it. They're at Mount Sioux. Also, I did upgrade some of our guys just a little bit, I think. Um, the, the guys have engineers now, which is nice. It actually might be able to throw in some anti-air here, too. I kind of doubt we'll have enough of it. Yeah, but for now, I think anti-air is going to be pretty darn useful. Defender of text, my friends. And then, followed up with Defense of Liberty. Uh, uh, we can actually support Huey Long, but I think we're going to wait. So let's actually come back over here first. Because I do want to get rid of the Dust Bowl. Still, we've now successfully fought off drought and famine. Our farms can breathe a sigh of relief. Thanks to the action by the government, we'll also ensure that such a destructive drought will not be soon ever again. Or at least not seen soon. Good, good, good. Nope, sorry guys, not really interested. But I, you guys are doing really well over there. Like, against Russia, you're doing pretty darn okay. Um, also, oh, hello. Of course, these guys are fighting the Russians as well, so that really does help out. They're still fighting the Italians over here. Oh, they're pushing into Belgium a little bit. That's not good. That's not good, but 
as long as we win over here, that's all that matters. Alright, so we, we punched a hole through here a little bit. Uh, they got some Mountaineers. We're not looking great on anti-air and support equipment and artillery. Actually, artillery is going even worse now. That's not good. It's an anti-40, of course. Uh, get some better anti-air. That'd be nice. Get some better planes as well. We've got some heavy tanks in production still, which is nice. We've got some Lamar M3s. Uh, kind of kind of wait first. Let's wait first. After industrial bowl recovery, encourage competition. We don't need more fuel. New companies should be available. Um, I think I want to get through this one. Remember the Alamo? That'd be kind of nice. Military arms complexes. Having the knowledge to produce more modern armies is one thing. Building it efficiently is another. With a small number of factors, it's even more important than even a bit of productivity be squeezed out of our arms industry. Very good. They really don't want to attack again, huh? Germany proposes a single currency. In light of the consequences of Black Monday, the German government has come up with a new proposal to rejuvenate the continental economy. In order to meaningfully increase and simplify commerce and trade across the Reichspack, they propose that the German currency, the Mark, should become the accepted currency in all of Middle Europa, or named formally to the Zo Europa Mark. This proposal is modeled after somewhat after the Zollverein agreements between the German states of the 19th century, which, among other things, established a standardized system of currency exchange pegged to the G Prussian Mark, although it reached its reach and ambitions far greater. In many of Germany's subject partner states, currencies are tied to the mark already, so the actual impact would be relatively minimal. How should we respond to the proposal? Count us in? I'll try one out. This is very weird. Attacking here might be a mistake. This one up here is probably the best bet we got right now. Go in there if you can. And help out too. Um, We could use more tanks. And all it takes is steel, but we don't have any steel, so... Uh, we don't want that too. Grab one more thing of steel. I don't understand why the PSA does not fight the, the American Union state. Because if I remember correctly, looking like the American Union state is out of manpower. So, I'm not sure why they don't, don't do anything there. And I don't know why Argentina, but why did it just slow down, guys? Why did it just slow down? Oh, actually, export focus. Actually, export focus is actually pretty good for us to do right now. Just because we, we get bonuses and we don't lose anything, really. Monarchy restored in Greece. Well, good job, Greece. Might make up guys 40 combo eventually, but not yet because fighting down here with 40 combo is a very, very, very bad idea. All right, let him attack us. Let him wail against us. We've only killed a third of a million of them off. Um, this tile's next, hopefully. We'll see. Or over here. That's not too bad either. Obviously, we could use some Mountaineers over here, but still. 75 ain't too bad. Argentina, please, if you could, maybe we invite again. Please. Oh, actually. It's mountains, but there's still only a militia. Please don't lose. If you can win, that'd be great. I know you're going to take a massive amount of attrition doing this, but... Oh, so slow. Help him out down here, maybe. Help him out. 84%. Yep, it's part of Mexico. Not very good. And we've done mobilizing, too, so that's not good. Dust Bowl recovery. Followed up with military arms complexes. Followed up. Follow, 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 followed up with upgraded weapon. Our rifles have... <clears throat> Served as well, but it's been a decade since we upgraded them. Perhaps we should study new American rifle designs to see if we can improve what we have. 92, come on, come on, cut them off so we can kill these guys off too. Come on. Oh, 99, very, very good. Well, next up is here. Let the guys get a little bit more rest. Um, air stuff, air designers fall. Bucharest, hello, hello. Chief of the Navy, that ain't too bad. Uh, Aaron's Eaker, that's not terrible. We also went with uh, uh, Bruce Palmer Hood, as well as Dwight D. Eisenhower, so that's pretty cool. Ingles, carrier ship stuff, and we'll see. Hey, look at that. Yeah, let them starve. Let these sons of guns starve. You can probably send one in, and they'll be fine. Cool. And 1940, get some more atomic research. Nothing like a nuclear Texas. Help out, help out if you can. Thank you very much. That'll be done. Hey, look at that. See, a Liberia wants to give us some artillery. Very nice. Um, we're so close to capitulating them. So close. 92% of the way there. I'm... What am I going to do? Planes. Planes, 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 planes. Up next, after this... Ain't, actually, you know what? We don't have to really guard this area. I don't want to send them into the mountains, though. And that's all we have left, pretty much. Quite literally, that's all we have left. Which is super bad. I don't want to do this, but I might sacrifice the, light the heavy tanks here. Come over here first and come into there. Because we need... I want to attack here. Or here, or here. But cavalry is probably pretty weak compared to everything else. They're still fighting for Chicago. Yeah, I'll say the Reichsbach is doing pretty darn well, except maybe in Belgium. Maybe? Yeah. Belgium's still pretty much the same. Spain is Spain. Um, these guys are looking okay, too. And now well, Asia's looking Asian, so what else do you expect? How much political power do we get every day? 1.84, huh? All right. Are the tanks up here yet? No, they ain't. Oh, my goodness. You're taking forever. Actually, since we're here, Mountaineers... Mountain divisions, we must be using this to know. 
Where are the mountain divisions? Oh, right here. Texans resistance fighters. Uh, let's go and do this. Duplicate it just in case. Biggies. Because we have enough army XP to do this right now. Get more guns. More mountaineers. Can we get at least 20 combo with, maybe? That's good. Get him some support equipment. There you go. I'm going to convert you. Oh, I can't convert him. That sucks. I'm going to convert both of you to this. No. I'll give me one of you guys. Can one of you guys convert? Yeah. Okay. That's fine enough. That's fine for us. Uh, then we're going to attack here, probably. That's probably the best bet for us to do. Oh, look at that. See? People give us more stuff. We love it. Minus three sevens. That's, that's pretty good, too. Anti air. Not as good as I'd like. Uh, motorized. There you go. Put you down a little bit more. Cool. And send them all in. That's probably a really bad idea, but we'll see what happens. 72. We should be able to win. I mean, six divisions versus two in these mountains. But still. Uh, since we're here, shoot for Air Force. Here. We'll get that one. Why not? Anything that could give us a slight advantage here. And if that's the case, you might actually be able to get Durango if you move fast enough. But you know what? Deutsch Asian is a great, great ally. So. Alright. Upgrade our weaponry. Follow it up with... Texan Cavalry. Horsemanship runs deep in Texan history and culture, and it would be foolish not to embrace it. Proud soldiers will defend Texas on horseback just like in olden times, and get two more divisions in Del Ma Delmarva. Basically Delaware. What the heck? Which is fine with us. Okay, seriously, Argentina, why did you stop? You were doing so well over here. Keep going, keep going. I know it's, it's very painful, but that's alright. Nice. Go, 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 go. They're attacking us. Oh, oh, that's only one division attacking us. I don't know if we can actually win there just yet. If they stop attacking, we might actually be able to do okay here. Oh, come on. Proved anti-air. Nice. Come on. Durango might be it. That's all we need. Maybe, 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 maybe. It is almost 41. Hmm. Did we actually make any ships yet? No, we have not. Alright, that's fine. 78, come on. Screw it. Get in here. Go, 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 go. Come on, I know they're really well... They're actually really... Oh, no, they have no engineers, huh? They would have had engineers by now. Anywhere else we can attack just in case. Uh, three divisions is quite a bit. Two divisions is quite a bit. Uh, 89, 90, come on. Three divisions is quite a bit as well. Yeah, I don't know why the Argentines have stopped naval invading. Oh, come on, get in there before they show up. It's over river, so we got extra time. Come on. Oh, we're not going to be able to do it. Oh. oh, we were. We were. Now that's nice. You guys immediately begin assaulting this area. And help them out. That's not enough, is it? Oh, come on. 98. 98% of the way there. You know what? Screw it. You guys are just going to stay here first. Oh, that's over a river, though. Can you guys actually win here? That actually would not be too bad. Cancel lonely, huh? No, thanks, guys. We're okay. Ooh, you might be able to win. Maybe. Maybe. It'd be better to attack down here, but these guys don't have that much organization. That's why I want to attack right now. Ooh... 38. Yeah, you're not going to be able to win there. Hold. I'm going to use up these heavy tanks if we have to, so... My apologies that it's taking so long to get this done. It's just... When you get to these really mountainous parts of Mexico, it's just not bueno. And Argentina. You literally took over half of Mexico. Please invade again. Please. Nope. Um. Yeah, at this point, I think we have to stop using these tanks. They're fun and all, but they're not really that great. But okay, another tank division. Finally, a light tank. Hey, not bad, not bad. Stop moving too much. Um, Right here, might have had three divisions versus two. is just not worth it. Follow it up with head of intelligence. Yeah. Start doing this. Start doing something about them. Cool. And I'm sorry, we're getting bogged down in Mexico. Just it is what it is. Two horses. That'd be easier to take out. Upgrade a weaponry. Texan cavalry. Follow it up with, remember the Alamo. The Alamo has been ingrained in Texas national culture and is a rallying symbol for the military. As Texans, as soldiers, we pledge to never forget the events of the Alamo. And we pledge to fight to keep those horrific events from repeating. Remember the Alamo? Remember the Alamo. As we're ignoring Europe. <laughs> mm, it'd be nice to attack here, but we can't quite yet do that. Um, You know what? I think I'll finish this off screen. So, overall, not too bad for the first episode. I mean... With the Reich's packed up, we took out this area, which is very nice. And of course, I gave the Western Command Center over here. But other than that, I'll finish this war off screen and the other casualties. We lost not too many. We lost a lot. But other than that, oh yeah, see the Germans invaded here too. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. 
Check out my Discord link in the description below. And uh, I guess I will catch you all tomorrow as we'll watch the Germans inflict a lot of casualties upon themselves. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.